together faith groups, trade unions, civil organisations and individuals to discuss the issues of social injustice in Lanarkshire, real issues that matter to you and your communities. It's good to be here today, um, but of course the reason that we're here today is not so good. We're here because um, something needs to change. Um, we, are, we live in one of the most unequal societies anywhere in this part of the world. But there are many people, many people in churches for whom social justice is a passionate concern which is at the heart of their faith and not some kind of add-on thing. I'm aware that being passionate about social justice that people can do that from the perspective of faith or from the perspective <coughs> of no faith. Indeed, in our work, we have been clear that issues around poverty and inequality can't be tackled by any one sector or group or agency. There are no easy solutions, but the absolutely essential thing for any solution to be looked towards is that there are cooperation and partnership with different people who share that passion. What I want to try and do just now is just say briefly what, from the perspective of the Poverty Alliance, what social justice is. The first one, I would say, is equal citizenship. That's kind of the core of a conception of social justice. So every citizen in society should be entitled to an equal set of civil, political and social rights. In a socially just society, all citizens must have access to resources that adequately meet their essential needs and allow them to live dignified lives. And the two words there that are important are adequacy and dignity. Our vision of a socially just society can be achieved. It is affordable. And not only that, it's essential for all of our well-being. And I think today's discussion is a good place to start that. I believe that the trade union movement is a social movement. And that if you seek justice in the workplace, you automatically have to seek it in the economy and therefore you automatically have to seek it in society. So the starting point from any social change is to have some sort of vision of what a socially just larger would look like. I believe that this start of this movement today can add to our long term heritage in larger, a heritage that fought for social justice. We just have to find new ways. Oh. The, the workshops at the end of the day will have a, an open space discussion and we're all involved in organisations where we are professional talkers but we would like to root that open space discussion in the learning and dialogue that's taking place during the day so that we really do focus on next steps, what will emerge from today. Do we want to form some kind of way of working together, some kind of coalition where we come together? And if that's something that we're interested in exploring, what would um, the boundaries be and how would we organise that in such a way that it allows all our organisations to feel good about that and also it gives you a kind of clear understanding about what that you can take back into your organisations and pretend to them and have a discussion with would it be places in Portland nowadays? Well, oh, people, yeah. be it yeah, from, uh, uh, from poverty to, uh, to higher up uh, uh, in, in the pay uh, scale. And so My name's Jim Baxter, I'm the Vice Chair of the local wildlife branch based in Muller Wildlife Supreme Drivers Union. I'm also the, one of the founding members and the Chair of North Lancashire Trade Union Council, and that's really the main reason why I'm here today. Uh, as life do, I actually feel like as a trade union with a role to play in society, not just to make sure people get to their working time every day, but as a, as a trade union movement, we do believe actually the trade union movement have a role to play in, in bringing to society through, which was quite good to hear John talk about that today. I think we'll look at, as I say, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the issues of poverty, uh, social injustice, and uh, how we create a fair and equal society. It's not a personal matter, you know, I was born and raised in a council estate, I'm one of the fortunate ones that got a good education and has got a fairly decent job. There's a lot of people I <coughs> decide grew up with, went to school with and are related to who weren't as fortunate and I'd like to see what changes I can make in my community. I mean, you said that's all I mean about um, I mean, I'm 
in that moment. Yes. Than that just it's just more actually, most they feel good. Everybody feels good. It's not been helping. You know, I've been nice to have a bit. I just want, I'm just going to say a wee bit about um, the foundation of my faith, which is my understanding of uh, Jesus. And um, then just a wee bit about what Jesus actually did. Um, a wee tiny bit about some of the principles that maybe... Um, I think you can begin to see shaped. Uh, I'm Christina Terry, I'm from Motherwell College. This is my last year and I'm going to need another course to help myself get a better job but um, people in my year want to go into work in, in like three months time so <laughs> they kind of need jobs and there's not that many out there. Uh, Suzanne Donnicke and I manage a community organisation, it's a charity, uh, Campus Lang Carers. We're based in Campus Lang, providing um, care and support in all communities. Derek Pope and I come from Motherwell, I work there as a minister in the Church of Scotland and a rehousing scheme. Mm -hmm. But certainly these, these issues of justice and injustice have been part of my life for a very long time and so I felt very comfortable about coming along and interested so to do. Very interesting indeed, first of all, uh, usually when I go to meetings in places like this it tends to be church people, people who are also coming from the same kind of background, great to realise that there are different traditions and lots of good people thinking about the same, the same kind of issues. Even within Motherwell sometimes we feel a bit isolated as if we're the only folks who are there thinking through these things and within the company today there's been three or four quite near neighbours of mine uh, who come from the same kind of background and same kind of interests. And this aspect of the day really should be trying to look at next steps. Throughout the day it's been punctuated by, we don't just need a nice day where we snuggle up to each other and tell each other how wonderful we are and how great it would be to work together. We need some next steps. Um, I think that it's important that the next steps are about having more conversations and bringing more people in, whether that's people in their own organisations or that people in other organisations that you think could have been here or would have in common. So the next step, I think, should be about going out and having a conversation with people about something that perhaps we share. I mean, one of the kind of most obvious things, but I don't want to make any presumptions here, as a living wage, because mm -hmm. that, in a way, started all the conversations off with each other. It was about how we felt about a living, mm -hmm. an hourly living wage. One of the examples was Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights. Last Sunday was the day they commemorated and celebrated his life and his effort. And one of his phrases that I uh, always liked and I uh, used in various teachings was, we must learn to live, to live together as brothers and sisters, or together perish as fools. We went round everybody and said, what are you interested in? Um, the living wage, social justice, unemployment, crime, you know, um, and, and it was the, what's underneath that, you know, and we're not going to find out necessarily what's underneath that unless you go out and start speaking to people. Something from, from UNICEF and North Lancaster Chase Council, um, we do need assistance to support people to lead the dialogue on what is social justice. And I think, I think that's a really important one. It's, it's a different skill that's required, I think, to go and talk to people in the community who might have very little in common with you, but you, so you want to go in there and deal with them and talk to them without coming across as patronising, or what do you know about it? And it might very well be that I'm asking myself the question, because of this day, what will I be doing differently? on Monday and how will the people in my parish know that I'm doing things differently because of this day? Mm -hmm. Contacting the bishops, let the bishops know how much poverty is in their parishes. Let the people in these parishes know the people are actually living in poverty and that this is a chance <coughs> for them to come and have a voice and work together. I want to hear politicians, real honest politicians will say is, make me do it. Put me under pressure and make me do it. And we need a different kind of politics that takes the best bits of the old politics and a new politics and merges them into an organisational framework where organised people can actually deal with these democratic feelings. And it won't be perfect, and it won't succeed all the time, but it will be different and it will offer us new tools. I don't want to be part of something or make the same mistakes I've done in the past, get involved in something for a week, a fortnight, for six months, and all of a sudden, what happened to that? What was that? That was nice. So I'm more, I think there's enough people in this room that are convinced that something can come in, whatever it is, I'm not quite sure, but something can come out of what's happened here today.